Hey guys, welcome back to Seb's Kitchen. I hope you've all been staying at home and keeping safe, more importantly, looking after your sourdough starters. Thanks for all the questions and all the input. It's been great fun reading all your comments. Today is the day. Let's make a loaf of bread. So guys, with any luck, you have been looking after those sourdough starters and some of you might have a starter that you are able to bake with already. Some of you might not have, and you know, that's okay. Don't panic. There's been lots of messages being sent telling me, you know, my starter doesn't look very good. It's not working. I haven't got the right flour. You just have to be persistent with it. It may be that you haven't got the right flour, some of you, and you'll have to try some different flours out. It's really difficult. I can only show you the flour that I use and the way that that flour is made up in terms of its uh, protein percentage and how much gluten is in it. So persist with it, keep trying, don't lose heart. You will get there eventually, I promise. And I know that some of you have got some amazing looking starters. I've got some photographs that have been sent to me of explosions and bubbles and all sorts of stuff going on, which is fab. I hope you enjoyed the quick shots episode that I did, which was just a little bit of an update for you because I forgot to tell you about some of the equipment that I use and I just wanted to kind of clarify some of the points about my starters and how I use them um, and hopefully that was of some help. And I'm going to do those quick shots throughout the series of shows over this period of time and hopefully you'll find those really, really useful. Today is going to be quite a long episode because it's about baking that first loaf of bread. So, what are we going to do first this morning? Well, first of all, I've got some of my kit out. I've got my mixing bowl, some scales. I've got a flour shovel, my flour, and I've already poured out and measured out some water. Kids, making a racket. Ah! So my baking day will consist of me taking my starter first thing in the morning and giving it a really good feed. On a baking day, I will actually put it in a warm place because I want that yeast to get really excited and I want a lovely bubbly starter to bake with. The next thing I'm going to do is make up a really basic dough, just flour and water. Now this is a great time for me to tell you about hydration. The big mistake that a lot of people make, and I made it when I started baking bread, was I would read recipes for how to bake and I would see percentage figures of how much water to put in my flour. So for example, to make a great loaf, a great baker might tell you that his loaf of bread is 80% hydrated. And that sounds easy, right? You weigh your flour out, you calculate the percentage of water to flour and pour it in your flour. Problem is, is if you do that, what you'll find out is very quickly you have a bowl full of what looks like mucky plaster. You can't handle it, you can't do anything with it. If you look at your starter, it's actually quite runny, it's quite liquid. And so you have to include your starter as a percentage of your hydration. So to give you an idea, today I'm going to mix up this first little batch of dough, which I'm going to show you up close, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm not going to mix up a load of flour and 80% water. I'm going to take a lower percentage of water because I'm going to make that percentage up with my starter. I hope that kind of makes sense in a roundabout kind of way, but you get the picture. So I'm now going to show you how that works. So I want my loaf of bread to come out of the oven and weigh in it around about a kilo. And to do that, I'm going to weigh out 720 grams of my flour. Don't forget to zero the scales. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add 430 millilitres of water. And the reason for that is it equates to about 60% of my flour quantity. Don't forget how important this hydration is. We're going to do 60% water and 20% sourdough starter. That'll give us an 80% hydration rate for our loaf of bread. 
Add a little bit of time if you want to be cautious, and then get in there and start mixing your dough. The technique I use for this is really just to give it a good mix with my fingers and then a good mash as well. So squeeze the flour and the water through your fingers so you can pick up all that flour that's in the bowl. Don't worry about the fact that it gets stuck to your fingers. Look, my hands are absolutely covered in it. It's fine. This is going to work its way out pretty quickly. You can see already I'm starting to actually put my back into making the dough and it's starting to pick up all of that flour. Rub off some of the excess dough that's on your fingers, pop it back in the bowl and just give it a final mix. The next part of the process is going to be developing some structure in our dough. At the moment our dough is just flour and water and it really doesn't have any structure. You can see here how I just break it apart and it comes apart pretty easily. So what I like to do is just turn my basic dough out onto the worktop and then I'll give it a really good knead. To do it, use the palm of your hand and really stretch your dough out. It gives us a fighting chance to make a really great loaf of bread. With any luck now, you'll have a really nice dough that's easy to handle. Form a nice tight ball with it and then pop it back into your mixing bowl, cover with cellophane and we're going to set it aside in a warm place for three hours. So this process is known as the autolyse and it just helps build that initial structure and gets those glutens working in our dough. If you look at how my dough looks now, it has an elasticity to it that it did not have earlier. If I pull it, you can see that it no longer just breaks up and that is a really great sign that things are going well. The next job we're going to do is add that sourdough starter. So after that three hour wait, now you get a chance to drop your starter in. Here I'm adding about 150 to 160 milliliters of sourdough starter. It's bubbly, it's light and vibrant, and it's gonna be quite scary too. This is the bit where most people think to themselves, uh oh, I've made it all too wet and it's all gone wrong. But if you work at it and you're persistent with it, your dough will come together and you'll make a lovely base for this loaf of bread that we're gonna bake. So I reckon I've spent about five minutes mixing this dough in all and you can see it is starting to come together. In fact, it's becoming quite manageable. I like to turn it into a nice ball and then I'll spritz my hands with some water and what you'll find is that 80% wet dough will hardly stick to your hands at all. Cover your dough back up, pop it back in the warm place for 45 minutes to let it rest and then we're going to add some artisan salt. So why do I use artisan salt? Well, the simple reason is it's a natural product and it's full of amazing minerals that add great flavour to our loaf of bread. And it also acts as a retarding agent, slowing down the proving process and giving us control over our dough. I'm adding around 15 grams. Sprinkle it evenly over the top of your dough and then give your dough a really good mix. Wet your hands before you handle the dough, it just makes it a lot easier. Now the addition of salt not only adds great flavour, but it actually absorbs some of that moisture, so your dough will now start to feel quite silky and quite elastic. Set your dough aside for another 45 minutes, and then we're going to come back and stretch and fold. So having added that lovely molten sea salt, the next part of the process is called the stretch and fold. Now, unlike traditional baking methods, we are not going to knead our dough. We are going to stretch and fold it to give our dough that amazing structure and strength it's going to need to go pop in the oven. The first two stretch and folds are exactly the same. All I do is take one side of my dough, lift it up with wet hands, stretch it out and fold it back in on itself. And then I rotate the bowl, lift the next side of the dough up and repeat the procedure. Once I've done all four sides of my dough, I'll rotate the bowl and use my hand as a scoop to make a nice tight ball. Then I'll set my dough aside again for 45 minutes to relax and repeat exactly the same stretch and fold all over again. 
The third stretch and fold is a little bit different and I call it the pizza fold. With this one, we're gonna take our dough out of the bowl, spray some water on the work surface, and then we're gonna stretch it out to make a giant pizza. Once you've done that, the next part of the process is to create a dough parcel with it and return it back to the bowl. Doing this is showing us just how the gluten is developed in our dough. Return it to the bowl and then set it aside for a final 45 minutes to relax. Then we're going to come back and we are going to shape our dough for the final time. So lightly flour your surface with some semolina flour. Make sure you've got plenty of that on your hands as well because this is going to bamboozle you a little bit. It takes quite a bit of practice to get it right, I still don't. But the basic idea is to try and create a nice tight ball of dough that will hold together during the proving process and create a lovely shaped loaf of bread when it comes out of the oven. Now, if yours doesn't come out like this first time, don't worry about it. The wonder of sourdough is it can be as rustic as you want. It will still taste absolutely fabulous. And you always finish it off with a little bit of love. Now I'm gonna show you me doing that one more time. So for those of you that are interested, I have to tell you that this shaping method comes from a guy called Alex in Brazil. I'm gonna put his Instagram up here. He is a master baker. He makes what I'm doing now look so effortless and easy. He makes the most wonderful bread. Definitely worth following him on Instagram if you get into making more sourdough. So with a little bit of practice, you can get a really nice shaped loaf. And the next job that we're gonna do is roll it up and then we're gonna place it upside down into our proving basket. The reason for that is because we want it to be the right side up when we put it in the oven. Give it a really good sprinkling of flour and then we're gonna put it into the fridge overnight to let it slowly prove. So the morning after the night before and we're actually going to bake our bread. Here's my two loaves of bread that I've been proving overnight and you can see that they look plump, they've risen nicely and they're ready to go in the oven. I'm going to get my oven up to temperature and leave the dough sitting on the side for about half an hour. Now here's a shot of the inside of my oven and that rusty old bread tin at the back serves two purposes. It has water in it for steam, but it also protects my dough from the fierce heat of that fan at the back. So now I'm gonna turn my dough out and get it ready to go in the oven. Remember that razor blade on a stick? Well, this is when I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna make some deep cuts into my dough. You can do these in any pattern you like. There's loads of traditional ways of doing it. And as my bread rises in the oven, these cuts will help my bread expand. Now you need to be quite bold about this. Don't be delicate. Get in there and give it a really good swipe with that razor blade, just like that. And cut it deep. You can see I'm getting that blade right under the edge to create what's called a really nice ear on my bread. And then I'm just marking out a corn husk pattern on the opposite side of the bread, just for decoration. I'll give it a light dusting of flour, and then I'm gonna pop it in the oven. I always spritz a little bit of water into the oven. I wanna create some steam, because that really helps develop a nice crust. And then I'm gonna bake it for 40 minutes. All that hard work you've put in making your starter and preparing your dough 
and following along with my video. And I know there's been a lot of information in this episode, but hopefully it's got you to this point where at long last, you've managed to bake your first loaves of bread. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's show. I know it's been a long one. Baking sourdough isn't easy. It's great fun, but it does take time and it does take patience. We started yesterday morning getting our sourdough starter ready, making our first batch of dough, and we've come all the way through to this morning where we've prepared our bread, prepared our oven, and baked two absolutely fantastic loaves of bread. The one on your right hand side, that is made with 80% hydration, and the one on the left hand side is made with 75% hydration. Both really nice loaves of bread, but you can see the difference in how that hydration affects the oven spring of your loaf of bread. Next time I see you, we're gonna be making sourdough pizza in my wood-burning pizza oven. I can't wait to see you then. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time in Seb's Kitchen.